So let me, uh, let me pray first, and then I'll speak about where we're going this evening. Heavenly Father, help us this evening as we look at your word. Help us to understand it better, uh, come to a right understanding of, and to come to good, solid convictions about what to, how to honour you on a Sunday and with the rest of our lives. Where we're right in our thinking, I pray that will be confirmed. If there are any ways we can grow, I pray that you'd highlight those to us as well. Amen. Okay, this is where we're going this evening. First of all, there'll be a, a brief recap, because this is the second of three sessions looking at this subject. Uh, so I'll do that recap in a minute. Um, then there'll be a teaching session. So this isn't exactly a preach. It's more of a kind of teach. You might see a difference, you might not. We'll see. Um, and then hopefully we can, I can get out with this, I've got a roving mic, this <laughs> DIY job. Uh, found some sellotape in the kitchen kind of thing. Thanks, guys. Um, and I'll be like, what do you think about this, Roland? Um, so that's the, that'll be that. And then we'll go home, I think. We've got, um, I'll try not to go past 8.45 with all of that. I've got about, with all of that, all of that. Um, so first of all, brief recap, brief recap. So this is part two of a three-part series where everything links into Sundays, the Lord's Day. Part one was in July, so nobody remembers it, let's face it, even if you were there. So that was in July. Part three is in two weeks, that's here. And uh, yeah, what else have we got? After all of, if you go to all three of those sessions, you'll still have questions about the Lord's Day because there's just so much you could say. It's a bigger topic than I realized. Uh, there's, there's so much on it. So the recap, last time out in July. Wow. Um, we looked at Genesis and how rest is God's gift to us. We looked at Exodus, where in, you know, in the commandments, the Sabbath rest is a commandment. And then we went to the New Testament, and we saw how in the ministry of Jesus, the Sabbath is a massive issue. It keeps coming up way more than you might expect. And even in John 5, verse 18, I'm just... I don't think you'll have time to look it up, but John 5, verse 18, they wanted to kill Jesus, and one of the reasons was because they saw him as a Sabbath breaker. That was, that's John 5, 18. One of the big issues Jesus had, a major issue that, that Jesus often had, was with those who forced extra Sabbath rules on people and made it really, really rigid. That's something we really need to pick up on. He made, he would, Jesus really singled out people who would try and do that, and make a major... It, it was one of the big arguments, or discussions, if you like, with the Pharisees, all about them adding too many extra rules. When they say things like, oh, you can't pick berries, you can't heal people on the Sabbath, it's too much work, you shouldn't be working like that on the Sabbath. And part of Jesus' response to that is in Mark 2.27. This is just a recap, but Mark 2.27, where Jesus says the Sabbath was made for man, not man, not man for the Sabbath. In other words, the Sabbath is not there as a tool to bash us, it is there to benefit us as we honour God on that day. And it's also worth saying, as a recap, Jesus did not come to demolish the Sabbath. He came to fulfill the Sabbath, and he kept the Sabbath. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And right, this is all part of the recap. Where we're going to go next, I'll tell you in a minute, where we're going to go in two weeks' time, we're going to look at Luke's Gospel, which is kind of where this all came from in the first place in my thinking, we're going to go into Luke chapter 6, where Jesus says he's the Lord of the Sabbath. So that's your recap. 
and also looking forward. Ooh, okay. Now, if that was too long for you, sorry, that's just a recap. <laughs> We're not even into it yet. Okay, we're looking at all things Sabbath. The first thing is, have we even got the right day? Shouldn't we be on a, meeting on a Saturday? Um, some folks do meet on a Saturday and uh, believe that's the, they believe that's the right thing to do. So why is it we meet on a Sunday? I just want to clear this up at, at the start. Why do we meet on a Sunday? To put it simply, because Jesus rose on a Sunday. It was on a Sunday that Jesus brought in the new day. He brought in something of the new creation, breaking into this world, new covenant established. So when we meet on a Sunday, it's something of a celebration day. And in a sense, every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And Jesus definitely rose on a Sunday. Let's have a look in our Bibles, just to give you an example. If you look at John 20... John chapter 20, first first verse. Um, What does that say? Anybody want to shout it out? What What does the first bit say? Thank you, thank you. That's all, Nigel. Brilliant. We had a few people eager to do that, but you, you got in there. Yeah, it says early on the first day of the week. This is when Jesus rose again on the first day of the week. And interestingly, all four Gospels record it as the first day of the week. So if you're thinking, did he really rise on a Sunday? Have we got the right day? Yes, we definitely have. And all four Gospels are like, yep, first day of the week, which for them then was a Sunday. A most inconvenient day because it's like our mon- it's like our Monday is for us today. If you think about it, to change the Sabbath from a Saturday and to the, the holy day to a Sunday was massively inconvenient. Sunday being the first day of the working week, like like Monday is for many of us today. So. To gather on a Sunday was a big statement. They did it very deliberately. It was vital to gather together on a Sunday to change the day because Jesus rose from the dead on a Sunday. The triumph. Everything had changed. Now you might go, well, not sure about that. That's not enough evidence for me. Well, you could look at the history of the church and consistently... Over the centuries, Christians have met on on a Sunday. So we meet on a Sunday as well. That's not going to change at Davenport Rose. It's what we do. It is the right day. I know that people will say, oh, Saturday, Saturday. Through Jesus, I tend to think differently on, on that one. Now, what should we call the day Sunday? Uh, You know, if you're thinking, do you call it the Sabbath? Um, While I've been at DPR, a lot of people call Sunday the Lord's Day. The Lord's Day. Now, where do they get that from? Well, have a look at Revelation chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. So, in the book of Revelation, you've got John, and he's writing about the revelations he's got from from God. And, okay, so Revelation 1, verses 9 and 10. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll read this one. So, John says, I, John, your brother and companion, in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos, because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. And here we go, verse 10, he says, On the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. What's the Lord's day there, do you think? Well, most commentators seem to go for, it's a Sunday. He's talking about, it's a Sunday. It's, It's the Lord's resurrection day, where... 
we usually meet together and celebrate that, remember him and look ahead and worship. So when somebody says, oh, Sunday, it's the Lord's Day, it is in line with Revelation 1 verse 10. Now, you know the classic pushback on that is like, well, every day is the Lord's Day. Every day is the Lord's Day. Why do we call Sunday the Lord's Day? You don't have to call Sunday the Lord's Day. Some people do. There's no, like, command to call Sunday the Lord's Day. But it does seem there's a special emphasis placed on a Sunday. And for us, it means we gather locally here. So we can call a Sunday the Lord's Day if we want to. It is the day the Lord Jesus Christ rose again. It's his glorious day. And it always has been that way since the, the um, early church. Right, let's think about rest. I'm going off in, I'll tell you tonight, I'm going off in lots of different angles about the Lord's Day. Lots of different angles to try and give us a bigger appreciation of what's going on. Or to try and tie some of the knots that... Tie some of the knots. <laughs> Join some of the dots, maybe, rather than tie, tie us in knots. Join some of the dots. Um, okay, so thinking about rest. From Genesis, there was a day of rest, gifted to humanity. It's a wonderful thing. Now today, biblically, there's a sense in, in which we have two rests. Two rests. We have a day of rest and we have a person of rest who has presented himself as the person of rest. That's Jesus. And Jesus invites us in to his rest. If you have a look at Matthew 11, quite famous verses. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. So we have these two rests. It does... If you look at your Bibles, it really looks like you've got a day of rest. We still have that. We have a person of rest in Jesus. So Matthew 11, verse 28, and we read, Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. See the word. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So two rests. We've got rest for um, a, a rest day, and we've got a rest person. So there's some rest for our souls on a Sunday. I hope you do find it like that sometimes on a Sunday. There's some rest for your soul. In the storms of life, and I've known this to be true myself, in the storms of life, Sunday can be something of a harbour Something of a safe harbour, or even the, the meeting on a Sunday, can be something of a like, phew, whew, I'm here. I don't have to think about the other things right now. It's a, a safe harbour, something of that. But also, Jesus is the place where we find eternal rest, our person of rest. He is our eternal harbour, the karma of every storm. Jesus is our true Sabbath, if you like. He's our true rest. We go to Jesus for soul rest. Now in Colossians, we see these two compared. So have a look at Colossians 2, verses 16 and 17. And it's a comparison. Paul's comparing the day of rest with the person of rest a little bit. In Colossians 2, verses 16 and 17, who's got a massive voice? and what, Well, no, who's got a... A clear voice and wants to read those out. You probably just go for it. Thanks, Steve. Yep. So that no one judges you through your appearance, for we are ambassadors for you in the Sabbath. If your Sabbath then becomes a substance for the Christ. Great, thanks. So in verse 16, we've got the Sabbath mentioned, but then verse 17, uh, depending on the version you're reading, this. Those are a shadow of the things to come. The reality or the substance is found in Christ. In other words, Sabbath day is a shadow, whereas the Sabbath person, Jesus, is the substance, the solid,
ground. However, is this shadow done away with in 2021? Do we just say every day is the same? There is no special, there's no special day. Well, we haven't, biblically, we haven't done away with the shadow yet. The, the day remains. The shadow remains until Jesus returns. And it's very important to notice that the church has never abandoned the witness of gathering together on a Sunday. That has just never been abandoned. The shadow remains. The true reality, the, the, what the rest was pointing to was the ultimate rest in Jesus. Now, what is the significance of a Sunday, of the Lord's Day? And because you kind of think, well, what's so great about a Sunday? What's the, as Christians, if you go like Sunday is a special day, uh, in what ways? Okay, I'll just rattle off a list for you here. The significance of Sunday for the Christian, well, I've said already it's a celebration. It's a celebration of the resurrection. The second thing is it's a witness. As we gather, is a witness to the watching world on a Sunday. Something else about the significance of Sunday, it is, it is rest. Now, as we rest on a Sunday, it is also something of a witness, again, because we live in a world where it's like, just keep working harder and harder, and perhaps you can get to the semi-finals of the American Open, uh, or whatever, US Open, that's the one. I don't know if you are watching the tennis earlier, but um, if you just work hard enough, but we just keep working, you'll get what you want kind of thing. But we say, we trust Jesus to save us. We are not all about blood, sweat, toil to get what we want. What we really need is found in Jesus so we can rest on a Sunday. We are okay with that, and it is a witness. Also on Sunday, it's, it's worship. It's a day to worship God together and to, really important bit, to honour to honor God with the way we use that day. Like with every day, but especially on a Sunday. How can we honour God on that day? It is clearly a special day in the Bible. It's also a day of mercy. There's some... Um, when you look at what Jesus did on a Sunday, sorry, of course, back then, a Saturday, there's a di- of course, he's under the Jewish Sabbath at that point. On the Sabbath, what Jesus did were many acts of mercy. He, he, he's healing people. Which makes me think, you know, those who go to and run hospital services on a Sunday, it's a good thing to do. It's not weird. It's like, oh, no, no, reaching out to people on a Sunday is what Jesus did. Also... Significant significance of a Sunday, it's a blessing. It's a day that's been set apart since the creation for, for your benefit, for my benefit, for your blessing, for my blessing. As Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man. It's, it's for our, our good. Now, personal question for you and for me. How do you seek to honour God this is rhetorical. You, I'm not looking for an answer. Just think, how do you seek to honour God on the Lord's Day? Now, it's fair to say in every church, almost everyone has got a slightly different take in their life on how they honour God, how they spend their time on the Lord's Day. And I've got to say, there is a freedom in this. So, for example, some people will say to you, we must have three meetings on a Sunday. So we've got to have one in the morning, we've got to have one in the afternoon, we've got to have one in the evening because it's the Lord's Day. So we've got to have three meetings. Some say it's better to have one service, big focus on one service. If you look at England generally, that seems to be the trend. Biblically, there is no command to have three services. There's no command to have two services. Tell you what, though, if you don't have any, if you have no services, it's, it's plain disobedience. You know, we're just not gathering at all, you know. 
we'll just go down the shops and be church in Tesco. It's like, eh, I don't really see that in the Bible. Uh, so feels like plain disobedience uh, dressed up as evangelism. Imagine that. So, there's a lot of disagreement about, I've, I've been asking a few people about Sundays, and you can feel them getting like warm as they're telling me, it's got to be like this, it's got to be like that. They're like, okay. I was thinking, maybe we shouldn't do this subject, but then it made me think, maybe we should, maybe we should. Um, so what do we do when Christians disagree, Bible-believing Jesus-loving Christians, when they disagree on what to do on a Sunday, what do we do? Well, thankfully, Paul helps us in Romans 14. So let's have a look at Romans 14. And I'll read this one because it's, it's a fair chunk. Um, so Romans 14, verse 5. And Paul is dealing with issues of um, different, people have come to different convictions about what to do with uh, holy days and also with food. So here we go. Romans 14 verse 5, Paul says, one man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. This next bit is really important. Each one should be fully convinced in his or her own mind. Like we, we, need to f- we need to form good, godly convictions. And I know, basically, you're all doing that. Forming good, godly convictions. And we sometimes differ on those. But you need to be fully convinced in your own mind. Verse 6. He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God, and he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. And if you jump to verse 19, there is a really important thing to see here as well. Paul says, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. So that's the letter to the Romans, and there are a few problems. One of the problems in verse 5 is sacred days. We don't know for sure, but these disagreements about sacred days probably included some discussion about the Sabbath, what to do with the Lord's day. And the way that works out for us can be things like this, where, like, what are we supposed to do when you're having a conversation after church on Sunday and somebody somebody says, oh, I never go shopping on a Sunday. I've got six days to go shopping. I'll go on one of those days. Never go shopping on a Sunday. And the other one says, I always do my weekly shop on Sunday. You know, it's really really nice. I love the sort of, it's it's really restful and... uh, like to do it then, okay? Or, or what about when somebody says this? We've got two different groups here. Somebody says, oh, a Christian. They're all, they're all Christians. First Christian says, I love to go on a long bike ride on a Sunday afternoon, sometimes well into the evening. And then the other person says, I never do strenuous exercise on a Sunday. That is wrong. Well, then they backtrack. It seems wrong to me. I read really good Christian books instead, right? Okay. These are things I've heard different Christians say. So what are we supposed to say about that? Well, Romans 14 has a few good things to help us navigate that kind of thing. The first thing is we must all come to settled biblical convictions, and they won't be exactly the same as the person next to you in most cases. So the But we want to come to settled biblical convictions. Look at the end of verse 5. I flagged this up. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. Or to put it this way, search the scriptures, come to your own convictions on what is best to do on a Sunday 
It's good to talk with other Christians about it as well. And then to be aware that good, godly, biblically saturated Christians might think differently than you do about it. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is, which I'll really emphasize now, is that all of our decisions are made before the face of God. All of our decisions are made, God sees it all. Right, now you see a lot of this in verses 6 to 8. Let's look at verses 6 to 8 again. Um, So it says, verse 6, He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats me eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. You see, God is there all the time, to God. And he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. Verse 7, For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. So all of our decisions are before the Lord, and we seek to honour him with those decisions. So... You know, for example, if I say, well, you know, I go to church on a Sunday morning and then I play PlayStation games till three in the morning and that is how I honour the Lord. How? (laughs) Are you joking? I mean, but we need to look at our lives and think, well, how can I honour the Lord with this day? And it'll be different ways for, for different people. Okay, the third thing is, and I might have been in danger of this with my last comment, is do not force feed your Sabbath convictions on other Christians. You must be reading books all day on a Sunday. I can't read. (laughs) Don't force feed your Sabbath convictions on others. Work for peace. This is from verse 19 where it says, and this may be one of the biggest things of the night for us to, When we think about Sundays and different opinions, it's probably about the most important verse because it comes out of that context of disagreements between Christians. Verse 19, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification, as in building other people up. Let me just give some guidelines on some of the things we might like to do on the Lord's Day. I'm not going to force feed you. I've just told myself not to. So, But some guidelines of things you might like to go for. It is a day of rest. As far as we can possibly get uh, a day of rest on a Sunday. And I, it's no trouble for me to say, do try and get at least a day of rest out of the seven. Even if you're, you know police officer on a Sunday, that particular Sunday, do try and get a day of rest on another day. And that, it's just a wisdom call, isn't it? The way that God has arranged things is so that we need rest. We are to take at least a day off in seven to recharge our batteries a little. We're supposed to be good stewards of the body that God has given us. So take, take the time out that you need to be refreshed and energized in in God's service so that we're ready for the other working days. Now, let's just imagine that everyone has Sunday off and we, you know, we come to church on a, on a Sunday and you, how, might, how might a refreshing Sunday look for those people? Well, it's, it's different for different people. So if you sit at a desk all week, you might find that the best thing to do, the most restful thing to do with perhaps your Sunday afternoon is to go for a long walk or a bike ride, dare I say, a bike ride on a Sunday. But if you work on a farm and you're absolutely exhausted from six days of working on a farm, perhaps you just need to curl up in a chair and do nothing. Like, you know, just snooze. I just, I've just got images of my parents every afternoon, actually, where they're you just finished watching the one o'clock news. And it's like... Another thing, Sunday is a holy day. It's different. So gathering with God's people for corporate worship has always been a must 
within the Christian community, if that's possible. I mean, we do need some people to work on Sundays, but we don't need everybody to be working. So that, that is a basic rule for a Sunday. But beyond that, I agree with John Piper, who says this, I really don't want to lay down rules. Like, everyone's got to do this on a Sunday. I really don't want to lay down rules. However, I find it quite helpful to have examples so John Piper has given us a few examples of what we might do on a Sunday. This might be some, the most important thing you hear. Okay, so he suggests restraining secular involvements on a Sunday to say something about the treasure that we have in Christ. So an example he gives with his own kids, what, what he did with them is... They wouldn't go to the cinema on a Sunday. Like restraining secular involvement on a Sunday. He's not saying you cannot go to the cinema on a Sunday, but his convictions led him that way that actually my kids, myself, we're not going to go to the cinema on a Sunday. We want to show it's a different day. Uh, also when it came to sp sports, as they call it in America, sports. Um, so he... He wouldn't allow his kids to go to a professional football match on a Sunday. It, but he would, he'd made a concession, he would let them go to a friend's house to watch the game, but to have the whole kind of, almost like the worshipful atmosphere of the sports arena. He's like, I'm not going to, he was like, I'm not going to let my kids go there. Um, he's not saying that is a rule for all Christians, but what he's saying is that's where his convictions took him. In his thinking, I like this, he, he said he wanted a little bit of distance from, here's a quote, the whole swirl of non-God activity. So he wanted to have a little bit of distance from the whole swirl of non-God activity on a Sunday. Put it this way, he wanted Sunday to be noticeably different from Saturday. And um, Many of us have grown up in a world where it was like that. Do you remember? And all the Keep Sunday special campaigning and, like, and the increasing opening hours of shops on a Sunday. They could open this shop and then they could open that shop. And I remember Sundays being really quiet. Shops closed. And, um, now, we can still do that in our own way. But let, let the Spirit, let the Bible lead your convictions on this, how different do you want to make it? Um, so that we say to the Lord, I honour you especially on this day, and this is how I'm doing it. 